Picking up on our breaking news coverage from last hour, Michael White, an American, right now is on a plane after a prisoner swap in with Iran. And joining us now is Senator Tom Cotton, of course, Republican from Arkansas. Senator, good morning first. Morning, Ed. Uh, let's get right to the breaking news. Uh, how happy are you? What does this mean uh, for America that a prisoner, an American Navy veteran, has now been released? Well, of course, it's a joyous day anytime we get one of our Americans back. I commend the President and Secretary Pompeo and their team for all the work they've done to get not only Michael White home, but other hostages held in Iran. Um, I also want to thank the government of Switzerland, which acts as our representative uh, inside of Iran for what they've done to facilitate this uh, and other transfers in the past. But it's past time that all of our hostages in Iran are released and come home. Senator, uh, good morning and thank you for being here. It's Sandra. So you look at this coordinated, massive effort, a very detailed effort, as Rich Edson just laid out to us. It takes quite some time uh, to bring a prisoner like this home. Talk about the tensions with Iran and where we are today. Well, the, still very tense in the Middle East because Iran continues its campaign of terror and aggression against the United States and our allies. But the president's campaign of maximum pressure continues to work. Iran's economy is in the worst shape it's faced in decades. They're struggling with one of the uh, world's worst coronavirus outbreaks. Uh, and they know that time is not on their side. Uh, so the president's campaign has been working. It started two and a half years ago by ending the terrible nuclear deal with Iran. We continue to begin to unwind that deal. We just recently revoked more waivers for country to support Iran's nuclear program. Now we're going to move on to a big battle this fall to make sure that the traditional arms embargo on things like battle tanks is not lifted. That was going to be lifted under Obama's nuclear deal with Iran, which is just a reminder of how bad that deal was. Uh, you know, Senator, uh, on Sandra's question, it's interesting. I'm just checking Twitter from a couple of days ago, and Zarif, the foreign minister in Iran, has been trying to make hay of the racial tensions in America, is saying that the maximum pressure campaign you just touted is not working. Among other things, the neon neck technique is nothing new. Same cabal who've admitted to habitually lie, cheat, steal. They're trying to gain politically from the, uh, the uh, George Floyd death, as you know. Uh, so does that, uh, put that in context, does that show us that Iran is not serious despite uh, releasing this American prisoner? They're not serious about really working with us diplomatically? Well, J Javad Zarif is just a mouthpiece for a theocratic dictatorship. Let's compare what's happened uh, in the terrible case of George Floyd's wrongful death. Within just a matter of days, four police officers were removed from their positions. One was charged with second-degree murder, and the other three were charged as conspirators. That means that in accordance with the rule of law and judged by a jury of their peers, George Floyd and his family have an opportunity to get justice. What happens in Iran when people protest against that dictatorship? They are beaten to death in the streets or sent to secret prisons and never heard from again. That's the difference between a country that is based on equal rights for all and the rule of law versus the dictatorship in Iran. Um, so we continue to learn more about this U U.S. Navy veteran coming home. We're actually getting more information uh, as we speak. We'll have more on that Iranian scientist coming home in just a moment. I uh, want to move on, Senator, for the time being, uh, to your op-ed uh, that has continued to get a lot of reaction in The New York Times. Uh, Send in the troops was the headline that you wrote, the subheadline: the nation must restore order, the military stands ready. There's even been um, reaction from from New York Times staffers, uh, an online revolt, if you will. Uh, one of those staffers, one of those uh, sent out a tweet. Uh, this is a journalist from The Times saying, running this, your op-ed, Senator, put black New York Times staffers in danger in solidarity with my colleagues who agree. What do you have to say on all of that this morning, Senator? Well, I think it once again exposes the hypocrisy of all these woke progressives who claim to defend liberal values, but as soon as they're presented with an opinion with which they disagree, they go into meltdown, they demand censorship, they refer to words as violence, they call for firings at their newspaper. Uh, I will commend the New York Times leadership. You know, we obviously don't agree on very much, but in this case, they ran my opinion piece with which they disagreed, and they've stood up to the woke progressive mob in their own newsroom, so I, I commend them for that. But the bottom line is, 
four to, on a four to one measure, Americans support using the National Guard to put down riots and looters. By a two to one measure, they support using the active duty troops if necessary. That's the simple case I made in this op-ed, that there is both a legal basis and long historical precedent for using our National Guard and if necessary, federal troops to put down domestic violence. And in fact, it is the constitutional duty of the federal government to protect the states from this kind of insurrectionist violence. It happened in 1957 in Little Rock, at Little Rock Central to desegregate against our racist Democratic governor. It happened in 1968 in Washington, D.C., in Baltimore, in Chicago. It happened in 1992 in Los Angeles. These woke progressives have not engaged with any of these arguments or any of these historic examples. They are simply throwing a temper tantrum. Senator, uh, on the other hand, it doesn't sound like it's just woke progressives, as you call them, who are against some of the president's policies. His own defense secretary, as you know, Mark Esper, yesterday said he is not in favor uh, of invoking the Insurrection Act uh, and has real concerns about using active duty U.S. troops uh, in American cities. Uh, ha react to that, first of all, but what's your advice to this president? You've had his ear sure. on military and defense matters. There's a lot of chatter, as you know, now in Washington that Mark Esper might be out of a job soon. Sure, Ed. Uh, so as I say in my opinion piece in the New York Times, use, invoking the Insurrection Act and using federal troops is not a first resort, it's the last resort. But in cases where local law enforcement is outnumbered and overwhelmed and where the National Guard is not sufficient, the Insurrection Act provides the legal basis with many historic precedents for the president to protect our citizens. Now, ultimately, that's not a decision for the Secretary of Defense to make. It's not a decision for a senator to make. It's a decision for the president to make. And what the president needs are the forces that are mobilized or activated, ready to be deployed, and the advice and information to assess situations on the ground. I, I know that if we can do that with the National Guard and local law enforcement, that's exactly what the president intends to do. Well, uh, Senator, that did not stop Mark Esper, who was making a statement about this time yesterday uh, from s specifically stating how he feels about using that military force. Here's a bit of it from yesterday. We'll get your reaction. The option to use active duty forces in a law enforcement role should only be used as a matter of last resort and only in the most urgent and dire of situations. We are not in one of those situations now. So, Senator, what did you think when you heard that? Well, again, the president has said that he wants to use our force, our active duty forces as a last resort as well. And we've seen in Washington, D.C., over the last three nights, after looting and rioting and memorials being desecrated on Sunday night, that with the deployment of the National Guard and substantial numbers of specialized law enforcement agencies that we have in our nation's capital, they were able to stop the anarchy, stop the insurrectionist violence. And that's a good thing. However, these conditions can shift rapidly in any city across the country. And the the president needs to have the tools and the equipment and the information needed to move quickly to protect our citizens if that's what's necessary. Senator, this morning the president's also facing some pressure from his former defense secretary, as you know, James Mattis, uh, the retired general, uh, saying that he believes the president has made a mockery of the Constitution. He's upset about what happened in Lafayette Park. Uh, and he added, quote, this is the first president of my lifetime who does not try to unite the American people, does not even pretend to try. What is your advice to the president in terms of reacting to that beyond tweets, in terms of how does he try now to unite this country? Well, Ed, everyone is entitled to his opinion, including Secretary Mattis, but he's wrong on this one. Let's remember that it's the Democratic Party and too many people in the media for three and a half years that have tried to delegitimize the Trump presidency, try to imply that he wasn't legitimately elected, tried to upset the peaceful transition of power when the Obama administration was using the machinery of government to uh, upend the peaceful transition of power, and then continued for months and months and really even years the Mueller investigation to try to divide this country. Look, the president has said twice now, once in Florida last week and then in the Rose Garden on Monday, that the video that we saw of George Floyd's wrongful death was deeply disturbing and he called for justice in accordance with the rule of law and he defended peaceful protesters. But he said rightfully that we will have zero tolerance for rioting and looting and anarchy. And again, the vast majority of American people stand with him on that principle. All right. Senator Cotton, we certainly appreciate it. Senator your time. Tom Cotton. Yeah, we both Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you.